Colt single action army, seven and a half inch barrel, original configuration. This is what it looked like in the day. Colt single action army and 45 Colt caliber. This is how it came out and this is pretty much what it looked like more or less. Got a little fancier grips on this one perhaps. That's the beauty right there. 45 Colt. And that's the cartridge. It. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the uh, original configuration, uh, you know, for the most part, of this gun when it came out, 1873. It uh, was in this barrel length, and this is it essentially. This is not a really old gun. This one was made in 1957, a second generation gun, but it is uh, very, very much like the originals. Uh, these guns were initially meant to kind of duplicate the feel of the 1851 Navy Colt, you know, cap and ball, or the 1860 Army Colt, uh, you know, cap and ball. You know, the same same feel. You have a long barrel, uh, the same feel. The grips are a little bit bigger on the uh, 1860 Army. Now, on the 1851 Navy percussion gun, you have essentially the same grips, but they're trying to duplicate that that feel, that length for the uh, for the U.S. Army, the cavalry especially. Okay, so, and then of course, while I have this in my hand, you know, this is the progression. Many of you know this, but you know, before 1873. Now, I'm not going to get into all the specific history because after the Civil War, we were into that uh, developmental period after 1865. Between there and you know, 1873, there were some rimfire uh, cartridges, mainly for the rifles. And then Smith and Wesson actually had the earliest ones and that sort of thing. So, but we won't get into that today. But by and large, uh, this was it until you know the 18, 1870, 1873 came out. You had to, uh, as you have seen before, you had to uh, put caps on the nipple of each one of those chambers and bring those out. And you had to pour powder in each chamber from the front, and then put the ball in there. You know, literally a ball of lead, and then you use the ramrod here to push it down you know to seat the ball you just push it down into the plunger there so you had your reloading device right here with the gun pretty handy well sort of <laughs> tough to reload on horseback not something you'd want to do very often right that's why they always carried so many of these along so they didn't have to reload uh, as often All right quite a chore to reload but a good shooter good shooter uh, cap and ball percussion so quantum leap from that to opening up the loading gate and slipping in cartridges like that quite an improvement huh so uh, but that was the 1873 model essentially developed for the army that's why it's called a single action army you yeah. know this is a military weapon it is an assault weapon for the military you know uh, uh, this is Sam Colts one of his finest uh, pieces of equipment, although he died before this actually uh, you know, came about, th this particular model. So a lot of people probably don't think about that. Also, while we're uh, kind of talking about this length and everything, the original, uh, you know, uh, James Arness, uh, who died a couple, I guess it's been a couple of weeks now, uh, carried this barrel length. You know, this is the gun he carried it all through that series of, I think, for 20 years. His was actually not a Colt. I don't know if you knew that or not. Might not have cared, right? But his was a great Western. It was, I think, the first company that actually made clones of the Colt in the early 50s. And uh, it was it looked a lot like that. It just had kind of a either fake or, I'm not sure. I don't think they were really stag. I think they were plastic, but they looked like stag grips on it. But it was the same gun, this long-barreled uh, Colt single action or a clone of it. So uh, the gun he carried, and of course, we, you know, mention his name it was a great series uh, many of us with any age on us watch that series and still watch it. it's on the westerns channel every morning and every evening and uh, a great series a great show great writing great acting James Arness uh, uh, seemed like a great fella and he played a great character so we're sorry that uh, he's passed away that's pretty much what he carried too so some of the other characters I they carried the long barrel in the westerns you might be aware of would be Paladin if you ever see that, that's on the Western's channel, even running uh, currently, I think, still. He carried the long barreled. I think Cheyenne did, if you've ever seen an episode of Cheyenne. Uh, the ones that just come to mind, Hoss, 
they're not Hoss, but Ben Cartwright in Bonanza. I believe he carried the long barrel. And you can chime in with some others that come to your mind uh, in comments there. But there were several that carried. A lot of people think of that as being really awkward and long. But in a lot of ways, it's the easiest to shoot well. You've got a long sight radius. It's really pointable. But I could argue that for any of the three barrel lengths, which we've gone into in, uh, in other videos. You know, the five and a half and then the four and three quarters. Uh, it wasn't long before they started offering this gun in shorter barrel lengths. The five and a half inch uh, came out not long after that. They called that the artillery model. And, uh, you know, they always want a shorter gun, it seems, whether it's a rifle or a uh, hand, well, I don't know, rifles anyway. We think of carbine versions for, like, the people who are involved in the artillery or in other activities where they're not necessarily infantry and their primary responsibilities in the, the military are not to you know be shooting that particular gun They're, they've got other thing driving a tank or whatever it might be so anyway now not back in 1870s of course not many tanks then so beautiful gun uh, we've not really done a, uh, a video on this specific gun you've seen it appear you've seen it in maybe several videos because I I don't hesitate to bring it out and we've looked at a, a grouping of them but we want to kind of just focus on this baby uh, the way this gun came out originally. Got some other accoutrements here we just thought we'd add to it. Uh, we're not going to throw knives or, or tomahawks here. We've got uh, an old Puma here knife uh, that I've had for a long time. We'll talk about it at some other point, maybe a little bit more. That's a neat little knife. We have uh, a knife uh, by Larry Dula, I believe out of North Carolina, uh, D-U-L-A. We uh, just picked that up at Friendship. That's John's uh, at the muzzleloading uh, spring shoot up there. Really neat, uh, really neat knife, Bowie knife I like that. And then a Tennessee belt axe, and uh, then another knife from Hunter's Den. There, you've seen one like that in in the video. Just just to kind of explain some of the cool stuff. Yeah, we're doing a little bit of Western theme here, so we like to decorate the stage a little bit. We have uh, again what I was showing you before. You know, you had to with the old percussion, you had to put a ball in the uh, through the front of the chamber to load it and of course once cartridges were developed I brought out one I've deprimed you just have a cartridge you put a new primer in and uh, put powder in and then you seed a bullet yep. and you end up with something like that that will fire so quite an innovation seems old hat to us maybe but uh, that was a big leap they still by the way called these ball for a long time they just, uh, you know, shot with a ball or got hit with a ball or shot a ball, you know, because they were accustomed for many uh, years, decades even, of referring to a bullet as a ball because it was a ball, you know, and that is one. I believe that's a 44 caliber ball right there. I just grabbed some out of my stash there, okay? So a little bit of a uh, little history, a little specifics there. Just wanted you to uh, get kind of an idea where in the scheme of things these things fit. And remember now, 1873. Yeah, you know, we've done other videos on that. But uh, for those of you who are kind of new or you are, uh, don't have a lot of orientation, that was a big year for the cartridge. You know, the, this thing came out, the 4570 cartridge, uh, 4440, and a lever action gun that was one of the most popular ones ever made. So very big, big year. And it was, uh, you know, we're, we're used to new innovations these days with iPods and iPads and all the things that that come out you know periodically as technology changes so rapidly but uh, it just wasn't quite that way back in the 1800s and for a long time they shot the percussion pistol and then finally the cartridge came along and then that didn't change for a long time in terms of a single action let's take a couple more shots with this baby oh so many targets so little time what shall we pop I wonder if they had one of those challenge targets back in the 1870s or 1880s. They might have. <laughs> yeah, 45 knocks him around a little bit. <laughs> nice, nice. All right. I like that. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Remember, you load five with these, the old action style, the newer Rugers and things you can load uh, you know six and you can load six on one of these if you're on the range and that sort of thing I tend to just stick with the five uh, in cowboy action shooting and matches you load five uh, skip around a chamber and that way the hammer comes down on uh, an empty chamber when you are loaded pull it back let it fall 
put it in your holster maybe, you're going to carry it around. Okay? Again, because if that hammer were to be hit, you dropped it, and it was against a primer, it could go off. All right. So let's take a couple more shots of something here. Like that bottle. Oh! <laughs> I'm crazy on this. All right, pretty nice. The two liter Coke can and such were the Cowboys' favorite target, no doubt about that. They like that more than anything. I just shot four in it. Oh, well. I always did have trouble counting. So, uh, as I've said before, I don't know which of the barrel lengths I like the most. This original length is one of my favorites, I'll have to say. And this particular gun shoots pretty much right on. I can't make up a lot of excuses, uh, unfortunately, if I miss. It also has a pretty good trigger. So I'll have to think up some newer excuses if I miss. Nice. <laughs> I tell you, that left one always puts on a show, it seems. Of course, I do have one excuse. I don't shoot this that much. I need to shoot it more often. Oh, nice. See, a lot of people think these are inaccurate guns. And they can be. Let's see, do I have, did he shoot four or did he shoot five? Ah, oh, he only had shot four. Now he shot five, I believe. Well, I still can't count, can I? I was expecting to miss. All right. Sweet. Sweet. That's fun sometimes, just throw one in the dirt. These big old 45 slugs, I've talked about them before, but again, don't want to assume too much. They're 250 grains. That's pretty much the configuration that they used back in the day. And I'm using modern powder. I do load black powder in these things, or at least I used to. I haven't done it in a long time. I still have some. But uh, this is modern powder, 250 grain slug, brass case. And uh, again, uh, should I dare? Let me throw a couple at the gong. Again, just to show you, it will reach out there. Might reach out and miss, but it'll reach out there. Let's see, where do I hold? I think I hold right on. Okay. Can't tell where I hit it, but at least I hit it. <laughs> it's neat. A little bit of a delay there, right? This is not a 357 Magnum or a 500 Magnum. Uh oh. Yeah, I was just barely getting them on there, apparently. Took a leaf off. All right, calm down. There we go. Back on track. I think I have one more. Nope, I don't. Caught that flinch, didn't you? All right. That's fun. Because they're not, it's not a really fast round. It's not like a 44 Magnum. It just flies out there. You know, you fire a 44, it's boom, it's there. Bang, you know. This thing takes a little time. Now, you notice I shoot with one hand, and this is a big old long gun, but it's just kind of the way I, I do. John Wayne shot like that, you know. All my cowboy heroes, generally speaking. Now, in cowboy action matches, what a lot of people do is, I really didn't even think I was going to, I just sort of came to my mind, but they'll grab the gun like this and cock it with their left hand. You know, and you can, you can throw, and if you practice that and you get a light load, like a lot of those guys now and gals shoot a 38 Special in uh, cowboy action, and you can really, uh, you can get into a, a machine gunning mode with one of these things. You get boom, 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 boom. I hate to see a Colt, you know, work like that, you know, worn out, but you can get with some practice. You can imagine. I've seen people shoot these things just like you're, like I shoot a Glock. I mean, boom, 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 boom. You can really machine gun literally with the thing, almost literally. But I just, uh, I just kind of like shooting one. One hand, even if it is a little awkward and you got a big old long gun you're holding out there. Uh, you know, I don't shoot these to see how fast I can shoot them. It's for the history 
for the beauty. See, even my hands are dirty. It's almost like black powder. Let's try that gong again. I don't like, uh, I don't like those two misses I had on that thing. Good for uh, practicing concentration. I'm going to go for the ram. Yeah. It's a real tendency to, to jerk the gun over, if I can avoid that. Uh, what do I want? Let me try that turkey standing over there. There we go. Shooting one hand is really good practice for concentration. <laughs> hey, who says these things aren't accurate? I think there's one more. I'm going to go two-handed. Just for kicks. My arm's getting tired. <laughs> Missed, see? I need to be shooting one-handed. That is fun. I mean, that is really fun. All right. What else do we have here that needs to be shot with this big hog leg? There's a can I missed earlier. That little smart elk. Yeah, it's more like it. Maybe, uh, uh, there we go. Wait. I wonder if cowboys ever had a shooting tree like that to shoot at. Their shooting tree probably was uh, more along the lines of an oak or a maple, right? Shooting limbs off of it. <laughs> well, by the way, you know, uh, Patton carried one of these, don't you? Sure did. Very, very popular gun. Uh, you're not unarmed just because you have one of these either. I know. Some of you are looking at this thing thinking, wow, that's like a, about one step above a flintlock or a muzzle loader. Not exactly. You saw, I mean, it's very accurate out there at long range. And uh, let's just move down here a little bit. I've got some ammo with me here, I think. Let's take a couple shots of something like that. Let's miss it. I missed that on purpose, first shot. Since this is live TV, let me show you what happened here. The uh, base pin came out on me a little bit there. Now that doesn't, I've never had that happen before. The base pin holds the cylinder in. I know that uh, in the aftermarket world that there are aftermarket pins are oversized and everything else to prevent that from happening, you know, in competition. But, you know, it's something that's just never come up with me. I wonder why it did it today. Well, that's all right. Okay, my cylinder was getting a little bit loose there. That's never really happened. Never know, though. Okay, we got another round or two, I think. Uh, let me double check. Yes, one round. Remember, a Colt turns clockwise. <laughs> All right, quit. I was afraid the base pin had just fallen out. If so, uh, I'd have had to get down on my hands and knees and prowl around and look for it on camera. That wouldn't have been too good, would it? Now, a good cowboy's got extra rounds here in his belt. You notice I've got the 4570 there, kind of separating these. And I think those are black powder. I'm not sure. Those are some rifle rounds I already had in the belt. I wasn't sure, so I, uh, I put some fresh ones in here to make sure I knew what I'd be shooting. Don't want to take any chances, although they'd be okay in the pistol. But I have some I load full to the top with black powder for my rifles. And I do shoot them occasionally in here, but I didn't want to do that today. Uh, let's see. Maybe I'll try my two-handed shooting again. Now, I don't do this, but uh, just to kind of show you again uh, how you, you could shoot one of these pretty quickly if you wanted to. Uh, so, I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of go in slow motion, kind of deliberately, but let's pretend I'm a big bad gunslinger of the West. There's some bad guy, well, I don't know, let's say I'm a sheriff, and there's some bad guys after me. There's a couple or three. I can not a Glock, but I could pull it out, get both hands on that thing. Bad guy. You know, I'm 
might be able to get those bad guys before they get me. You never know. But then again, I have seen people, and when I was doing more of it, I could uh, hold my own, but some people who could crank with one hand pretty quickly, you know, get that thing out, let me try it. Uh, there are some guys in cowboy action shooting, in fact, in matches, they, they go beyond what I tried to do. They would shoot, uh, what do you call it? I think you call it, uh, the class I shot was duelist, black powder, duelist, or whatever. But uh, I think they call it double duelist. And that's, uh, duelist is one-handed shooting. That's the class. So you're only competing against people who shoot one-handed. Uh, but there's a, there's a uh, I don't know if there's a class for that, or that's just what they call it. But I think it's called double duelist. Now what that means is, you pull out and you shoot one gun with your right hand, you pull the other gun, and you shoot it with your left hand. So that does take some practice. I never never really did that. But let me try here a little bit. Uh, okay. Okay, that fifth guy got me. Uh, so, you know, it's not totally, totally slow motion. You know, even with uh, one hand, you can pull and, uh, and hit a target. You know, Wyatt Earp uh, was famous for his style. He advocated, uh, what, what was the line? Uh, shoot, shoot deliberately was the main, the thrust of it. Uh, take your time in a hurry, something like that. In other words, you can't miss fast enough to win and uh, you gotta be deliberate. See the sight, boom, boom, boom. Let the other guy spray and pray because that's, that's what gets you into trouble when you do that. So let's just take a couple more and uh, you got to watch me. I'll just shoot this thing all day. We may have a, another one of those uh, one hour and 30 minute videos because John can't stop me. Once I get cold single action out, uh, it's really, <laughs> it's hard to do. Let's just take a couple more shots long range. Watch me miss everything I shoot at now. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go for a turkey. Just over his back, that's all that. Oh, that's a good feeling. That feels so neat. Ah, oh, this thing is so accurate. Let's try Mr. Gong another time. Oh, I love it. I love it. Try right, Mr. Challenge Target. <laughs> all right. I think it's empty. Yeah. Okay, we talked about that challenge target that was donated to the range by challenge target. So uh, we're having a little fun with that. I'll put a link in the description so you know what that's all about if you're seeing it for the first time. I don't know what else to say except this is just a beauty. And uh, again, if you uh, have never fired one of these or held one, it's a special experience. I was reading some John Taffin recently about these guns. He's a gun writer, famous gun writer, and this is one of his favorite guns. That uh, He talks about it lovingly and how it sends you into another world, deep into history, the spirit of the gun, and how uh, Colt just didn't come up with a, a great grip and a feel. He, it was a major discovery almost, he talks about, uh, uh, just getting a gun that feels that good in the hand. I mean, it just fits like a glove, that plow handle, as they call it. They just, uh, it just doesn't get any bigger, any better, really. And you notice I do have my finger on the trigger more often with this gun. This gun will do nothing unless, of course, it's loaded and you cock the hammer back. You know, So I know we're a little more cavalier with single actions. We, we shouldn't be, but we, we kind of do. It's kind of the, the grip there, but uh, don't do that when it's loaded, but shouldn't do it any time, I guess. But that hammer's got to be pulled all the way back. You know, It's a single action, and uh, you go from there. But they're beautiful guns. Uh, there are a lot of different companies that make Colt clones. Colt clones means it's just like this. It's a replica of it. And that's what most people shoot in uh, cowboy competitions. What most people buy. You know, I've had them too. They're, they work really well. So uh, I try to take care of these Colts because they're a little bit harder to come by. This one was made in 1957, second generation. A really sweet uh, piece. As you can see, if, unless I flinch or something, uh, as I did on the gong there early, and I picked the limb off that tree there behind uh, it, it's right on. It just, uh, it'll drive tacks. It's a tack driver. It reminds me of my uh, long barreled Model 29 Smith & Wesson in that regard. They both have great triggers, and you can just 
pick off flies with it if you're steady. So, 1873 was a very good year, and we, uh, we do thank Sam Colt for this invention. Life is good.